Hi LEGO fans! He's back! Yes, I'm back with another vintage LEGO Harry Potter review. This is one that lots of you have been asking for and is one of my personal favourites. But we have a bit of a problem. This one has been on display for almost a decade and it's filthy. I can't possibly show it to you like this. So today we're going to be dismantling, cleaning up, speed building and reviewing set number 4840, The Burrow from LEGO Harry Potter. But the thing I'm really looking forward to is taking a look at those six fantastic minifigures, especially this one. We've got the only Molly Weasley minifigure, she's exclusive to this set and is worth about $10 used. Arthur Weasley is also exclusive but less desirable and sells for about $5. This version of my favourite character Ginny Weasley is exclusive to the Burrow and she sells for about $8. Fenrir Greyback appeared in this set and also the Diagon Alley set, that's one for a future video. He sells for about 4 US dollars. Bellatrix Lestrange is the most desirable minifigure, she's exclusive to the Burrow and sells for about $17 used. And finally we have Harry James Potter, he's not at all exciting, he appears in about 3 sets and he's worth about $2. This set is a beautiful recreation of the Burrow, the family home of the Weasley family. It's located on the outskirts of Ottery St Catchpole in Devon, England. It has all kinds of interesting features like this pig pen, and there are a bunch of interior features to take a look at. But we definitely have some dusting to do first. Other features we'll be taking a look at later in the video include the marshland where Fenrir and Bellatrix chase Ginny and Harry, and the Weasley's fireplace which wouldn't fit inside the house for some reason. Right now I think it's time to dismantle this so we can give it a proper cleaning. Here's everything you would have got inside the box and boy that's a lot of Lego. I'm literally going to launder all of the pieces except for the stickered parts which I'll do manually. To do this I'm going to use some warm water and add a biological detergent that you would use for clothes. I'll leave it to soak for a few hours, agitating it every now and again. Then we'll rinse off all of the bricks, give them a spin in the salad spinner and leave them to dry on a beach towel. And with that all done we're ready to start building. I'm going to go ahead and build set number 480, the burrow from Lego Harry Potter. And today this is going to be a 90 second speed build. And here is the fantastic and now perfectly clean 4840 The Burrow from LEGO Harry Potter. Reconstruction time was just over an hour and a half but it was slow going. I don't have the original instructions for the set so I was working off instructions downloaded onto a laptop. That's not a great deal of fun when you're under the studio lights and telling the difference between light brown and dark brown becomes really difficult. We're going to start out by taking a detailed look around the Weasley's family home, The Burrow. We'll also have some fun running around the marshlands yelling Confringo, but the thing I'm really looking forward to is taking a look at those six fantastic minifigures, 
So here it is, the burrow, the family home of the Weasley family, and possibly one of my favourite LEGO Harry Potter sets. As you can see, this is now considerably less dusty. Located on the outskirts of Ottery St Catchpole in Devon, England, the burrow is truly a ramshackle building. It was built on the site of a Tudor building with a large stone pig pen on the side. We don't know what happened to the Tudor building, but we do know that Arthur and Molly moved into the pig pen soon after they got married. With those humble origins in mind, we do actually have a pig pen and a pig on the side of the house. From humble beginnings, the burrow grew as the Weasley family grew. As they needed more bedrooms, Molly and Arthur simply built up. They used architectural salvage and a lot of magic to build the burrow into a multi-storey building. By the early 1990s, the burrow had grown into what Harry Potter would soon recognise as his second home. At the front of the house is this wonderfully welcoming porch or vestibule. There's a pitch roof to keep the rain off while you fumble for your keys, just in case you forgot the spell Aloamora. And underneath you'll find a large brown door complete with keyhole. So do wizards use keys or spells or what? Making the Weasleys home even more welcoming, we have these fantastic window boxes complete with red and white flowers. We also have that pig pen complete with swing doors and a pig lurking inside. I remember these guys from the Lego Harry Potter game I used to play on the Wii with the kids. Notice that the pig doesn't only have a swing door to get outside, it also has one to get into the burrow. As you'd expect from a home made up of architectural salvage, there are a number of different types of window. We have some of these slim windows complete with lattice shuttering, a small arched window above the vestibule and even smaller windows around the side, and then these rather nice bay windows with blue shutters which look out from the kitchen. Taking a step back and looking at the first floor, or the ground floor as we call it in the UK, it's easy to appreciate how the burrow might have looked before Molly and Arthur started building upwards. Where we have a tower emerging from the roof today would probably have just been a pitched roof back then. In the Lego version, but not necessarily in the movie, the burrow has three habitable floors. There's a first floor with kitchen and dining area, a second floor where the boys would have slept, and well, let's just hope Ginny didn't have vertigo. As the burrow reaches up into the sky, the quality of workmanship seems to be on the decline. We've got all manner of different materials making up this second floor. The windows are misaligned, wooden planks are starting to rot and fall away, and we have mismatched materials which makes picking out the right shade of brown from the instructions really tough. Around the side, however, the Weasleys do show some real architectural taste. I love this decorative blue and white window complete with decorative overhang. There are quite a few of these 1x2 blue tiles used in the set and they really help to lift the colour scheme. You'll see more of those once we get inside. Finally at the top of the building when it comes to Ginny's bedroom, the quality of materials seems to have improved. We've got a bunch of these red roofing tiles, and we even have three matching windows. There's a cute dormer window towards the front of the building, and this is finished off with some decorative roof tiles. You'll also notice several chimneys. The burrow is meant to have four or five of these on the roof. In the case of the Lego version, we have one around the side, and two more at the tippy top. That concludes our architecture lesson. I think Arthur and Molly would like us to come inside for a cup of tea. The Lego Burrow retains the rustic charm and cluttered interior of the original over three floors. At the top is Ginny's bedroom, we'll come back to that later. Next we have the bedroom of Ronald Billius Weasley, which it looks like he's sharing with Harry Potter. And finally we have this fantastic open space on the ground floor. It's illuminated by a small chandelier, and inside you'll find a small but perfectly formed kitchen. There's a range complete with stickered stovetop, a small sink including faucet for doing the washing up, and you'll even find a stack of plates and a couple of skillets for preparing meals. Another neat feature are these working kitchen drawers. In the bottom drawer we have a set of knives, and in the top drawer I think we have a set of forks. In the other corner next to the pig pen you'll find an occasional table complete with lamp and seat. Next we come to Molly's clock which helps her to keep track of the Weasley family. At the bottom there's a traditional pendulum which makes it look like a muggle clock. And then, well, let's just say I don't think this is right. Apart from the fact that my then 8 year old son put the sticker on wonky, it has the wrong kind of face. If I remember correctly from the movie and the book, this should have multiple hands representing the Weasley family. Where each hand points indicates the respective status of each Weasley. They may for example be travelling, playing Quidditch, 
or in the worst case scenario, in mortal peril. I keep hoping and praying that LEGO will release another version of the Burrow. Maybe they'll get it right next time. Around the corner and mounted on a wall is this broomstick. It doesn't look like a Nimbus 2000, so I'm guessing it's used for housework. On this floor we also have the Weasley's dinner table, which is of course the heart of the home. There are cups for butterbeer and glasses for stuff that isn't butterbeer. A copy of the Daily Prophet referring to the mass breakout from the wizarding prison Azkaban. And a bowl of cherries. The cherries were missing from the set, but thankfully my parts collection came up trumps. As well as the bench style seating at the dinner table. There are some more comfortable easy chairs in the corner. And finally for the ground floor there's a green stool which probably serves as an emergency chair. And a barrel! This really does capture the rustic, cluttered nature of the Weasley's house. It also makes a great place to play with the Weasley family minifigures. We're going to be taking a look at those in just a minute. But right now we're moving on up to hang out with Hedwig. This is Ron's bedroom that he shares when Harry comes to stay. It's rather cramped and filming inside is not going to be easy, but bear with me. One positive feature is that we can remove Harry's chest. Sorry Hedwig. Thankfully for Hedwig, she survived the fall, you know, wings and that. Hedwig is of course a snowy owl, which makes her difficult to film against a white background. Hedwig comes from the old High German Hadwig. It's a Germanic name deriving from Hadu, meaning battle or combat, and Wig, which means fight or duel. Harry's chest is a standard Lego element, and it's got something inside. We've actually got two 1x2 tiles. Yes, even boy wizards need the bare necessities of life, including a pair of socks. It's the same element that was used in the Freeing Dobby set when Harry Potter tricked Lucius Malfoy into giving Dobby a sock. Master has given Dobby clothes! Dobby is a free elf! Let's take a moment to reflect on the loss of our dear friend, Dobby the house elf. Oh man, I love that elf. <laughs> With Harry's chest removed, there's really not a lot to see inside Ron's bedroom. Space is limited, so we have bunk beds, including these blue and orange covers. And if you look very closely, you might just be able to make out the Chudley Cannons poster above the top bunk. Chudley Cannons is of course Ron's favourite Quidditch team, and in the book his bedroom is covered in posters. That really is about it for Ron's bedroom, so in the words of Porky Pig, that's all folks! On the top floor we have Ginny Weasley's bedroom. Keeping things simple, she has the same orange and blue bedclothes. And we get a closer look at the element that's used as a pillow. This actually works really well. Finally we have a bedside lamp for some midnight reading. And a copy of Xenophilius Lovegood's publication, The Quibbler. There's no doubt the Burrow is a fantastic Lego Harry Potter set, and I can't wait until they make a new one. But if you clicked on the thumbnail hoping to see minifigures, you're in the right place. We'll get to those in just a second, but we do have a couple of accessories to look at. Firstly we have this fireplace, which is way too big to go inside the burrow. It's also wildly out of proportion with other fireplaces I've seen in the past. At the base is a wooden plank, which is probably not going to hold up well due to the heat of the fire. And then of course we have those trans orange flame elements. Sitting on top of the fireplace keeping warm is this fantastically printed owl. I'm not sure which owl this is, and it certainly looks too big to be Errol. We also have some wizarding art thanks to a badly applied sticker. Turning this around hints at the fact that there might be an interactive feature here. If you're a Harry Potter fan and in touch with the finer points of the wizarding world, you may know that the flu network is not a way of spreading disease. It's a way of travelling using fireplaces and a fair modicum of magic. In this case it works just like this. I'm not sure the reality of travelling by flu network is living up to Harry's expectations. The fireplace basically has a pivoting motion which ejects the minifigure out of the back. This includes a sticker showing green magical flames after flu powder has been thrown into the fire. The other interactive features of the burrow set include this scene. It's where Fenrir, Greyback and Bellatrix Lestrange chase Mr and Mrs Potter into the swamp. I'm pretty sure that Ginny and Harry were wearing PJs and I live in hope that LEGO will include those minifigures in a future version of the burrow. The swamp scene includes a couple of spiky bushes in this rather nice tan colour. We also have a number of these fire elements and a soon to be fricasseed frog. 
For an interesting interactive feature, we have this catapult which can recreate the Confringo spell. It goes a bit like this. Well, that was an epic fail, so let's try it again. Also included is a second catapult with a bunch of trans red cylinders. I fear this is not going to end well for the burrow. With our comprehensive tour of the burrow complete, it's time to take a look at the awesome minifigures. From left to right, we have Arthur Weasley, Molly Weasley, Nee Pruitt, Ginevra, Molly Weasley, soon to be Mrs. Potter, the boy who lived, Harry James Potter, Fenrir Greyback, and Bellatrix Lestrange, or Lestrange if you listen to the audiobooks. First up we have the Patriarch of the Weasley clan who is absolutely fascinated by muggles. This is Arthur Weasley who was born in about 1950, so I guess in today's money he would be about 69. He attended Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry between 1961 and 1968 and that's where he met Molly. Uh, I believe he was sorted into Gryffindor House as were all of the other Weasley children that followed. And um, yeah, he is quite plainly dressed here with these grey pants, those are not printed, uh, but we do have a torso print which definitely was featured in the movie. Uh, something very similar to this anyway with the kind of checked shirt underneath. I've definitely seen that pattern before. We've got the kind of sand green colour arms and torso and you can see we've got the buttons and pockets on the front and if we turn him over, we've got a little bit of uh, actually pale green detailing on the back there, but again a strap around the back, some really nice printing, but nothing on the legs here. The facial expression is very jolly, we've got some laughter lines there, and I actually think he looks like um, Fred and George, in fact I've got one of the two minifigures that comes with the Diagonale set, as you can see, very very similar facial expressions, but without the, uh, the laughter lines, or certainly not so many creases on Fred and or George here. Uh, yeah, really nice facial expression, I love that smile. I don't think we get another one around the back, and indeed we don't. But then we've got this really nice uh, red hair, which is of course the trademark of the Weasley family, and that is the awesome Arthur Weasley! Next we have Molly Weasley, who was born in either 1949 or 1950. She's not saying, but we do know that she was born into the Pruitt family and was sister to Fabian and Gideon, who were also members of the original Order of the Phoenix. She went to school at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry and was sorted into Gryffindor House. She's also wearing this fantastic outfit, which definitely makes her one of the more desirable minifigures from this set. She's got these uh, sand-coloured pants on here, but then with really nice overprinting for this apron that she's wearing. Uh, the printing carries down from the torso onto the legs and even across the band of the legs which looks awesome. Taking a close look at that torso, we do have a couple of brooches here at the top there, some flower brooches. Uh, she's got some decoration around the neck here. Uh, I think those are probably knitting needles in the pocket on the front of the apron or pinafore. And yeah, we've got some more flower detail down there at the bottom. We do have a fantastic facial expression, very kindly, very motherly, and uh, yeah, a little bit wrinkled over the years, I'm sure uh, actress Julie Walters won't mind me saying that. And then she's got this fantastic red hair, which of course um, all of the Weasleys do. She doesn't have a second expression, but wouldn't it be great to have that expression where she kills Bellatrix? That would be phenomenal, and maybe one for the next version of the Burrow, if Lego ever get round to it. I do like this minifigure, it's awesome. We do have some more printing around the back. Uh, yeah, we've just got the detail on the back of the uh, either the blouse or the tabard that she's wearing, and then a little bit of detail there for the ties at the back, which tie around to the uh, apron. And that is the awesome Molly Weasley. This is my absolute favourite character from Harry Potter, Ginevra Molly Weasley, aka Ginny, and soon to become Ginny Potter later in life, of course. She was born in 1981, attended Hogwarts, as did all the Weasleys, and was sorted into Gryffindor House, and from a very early age she had a crush on Harry Potter, which uh, became uh, a thing in later life, let's just say that. She is dressed beautifully here in these red jeans, we do have some printing on the front here, you can see a little bit of metallic there for the zippers on the pockets I guess, uh, we've got a belt there, and then she's wearing this uh, kind of zipped up, uh, would that be a hoodie? 
It is not a hoodie, it's kind of a cardigan here. We've got some nice pipe work uh, around the front there. Uh, she's wearing a white t-shirt or a gray t-shirt underneath. And then she's got this really nice face. Um, also got the really sleek red hair. Of course, all the Weasleys have red hair, but she also has a little uh, clip in the hair. Be really nice if that was just picked out in metallics. That would look really neat. Turning around, we do have an alternate expression where she looks a lot less impressed. You'll find most uh, redheads have an expression that looks like that reserved for special occasions. Uh, we do have some more detail around the back of the, I guess you would call this a cardigan and not a hoodie, but it is a really nice print and you've got some uh, shadowing there for the details of the body. Uh, that is a really nice minifigure. Now, of course, later in life, uh, she became quite a sporty person. She was actually a professional Quidditch player for the Hollyhead Harp for a while and then became the senior Quidditch correspondent for the Daily Profit. But by 2020, which is about now, she actually now is the sports editor for the Daily Profit. But that is a fantastic figure, definitely one of my favourites from the whole Harry Potter collection, and that's Ginny Weasley. This guy needs almost no introduction. He is, of course, Harry James Potter, born on the 31st of July, 1980, and he was the boy who lived. I won't really tell you anything about his backstory because you probably know it already. He's also a very common minifigure. He's got these um, normal full-size adult movable black legs, which are very, very common, and then this printed torso. He's got a kind of white or grey blue t-shirt under there, and then this zippered top. I think that no, that's not a hoodie. Very similar to uh, Ginny's top. Uh, nice sporty number with the silver metallics there for the zipper. And around the back, just a little bit of hooped detail that goes around the sides and a couple of creases. We do, of course, have that facial expression, which has a little wry smile, the lightning shaped scar, and then the kind of shaggy haircut. I think we do have another expression. Yeah, he's looking a little less happy around the back there, but it still works very nicely with the hair. And that is a very common but nicely put together Harry Potter. Next we come to the bad guys, and they don't get much better than Fenrir Greyback, who was born in about 1945. He had a preference for attacking children and wanted to infect as many people as possible with lycanthropy, which is what turns you into a werewolf. He is dressed in this uh, really nice outfit, actually. He does have the plain black pants on here, but then a really nicely printed torso. We also get this in the Diagonally set, so this is not an exclusive minifigure to the Burrow. We do get another one of these. The torso is a really nice print with this black jacket. We've got a grey open neck shirt underneath and this uh, brown belt with a buckle. And then we've got this open necked collar which shows lots of hair. This is a hairy guy who almost looks like Jeff Goldblum. The facial expression is mean. You can just about see those pointy teeth which are used for bitey purposes. And he's got hair all over his face including uh, you know, pretty much down around to the eyes. When we take the hair off, we do have another expression around the back. Uh, this is not bearing the teeth this time. And uh, yeah, he's kind of got that weird expression in his eyes, uh, clearly possessed by the lycanthropy. No printing around the back, interestingly. But we do have this uh, pretty generic, uh, I don't think, yeah, this is probably a pretty common hairpiece. It does have the widow's peak, which you tend to associate with werewolves, but that is the fantastic Fenrir Greyback. And finally, we come to the most desirable minifigure of the set. This is Bellatrix Lestrange, or Lestrange if you listen to the audiobooks. She was born into the House of Black in 1951 and attended Hogwarts in the early 60s. She was, of course, sorted into Slytherin House, and she lived until 1998 when she was snuffed out by Molly Weasley. I simply love the facial expression on Bellatrix. It is awesome with that kind of evil smiling face and that maniacal look. And then we've got this fantastic hair. I love the way this sweeps down over the front and also over the back. It's a very, very nice hair piece. And we do have another expression around the back. That is probably just about the point at which Molly was about to snuff her out. Let's put this back on for just a second. She is fantastic. We've got this skirt piece on the bottom here, which is really nicely printed very elaborate dress robes with metallic printing and then a little bit more metallic printing up here on the upper part of the dress we do have some more printing around the back and some more metallics this is super super nice decoration on this minifigure and that is an absolutely brilliant Bellatrix Lestrange minifigure and I do hope we're going to see another one of these pretty soon I've got to say the quality of minifigures in this set, with the possible exception of Harry Potter, is phenomenal. 
Although Ginny may be my favourite character, I don't think she's the best minifigure here. That would be between Bellatrix Lestrange and Molly Weasley. Molly is a great minifigure and very collectible, but I think ultimately Bellatrix Lestrange is the best one of the bunch. So by popular demand, that was set number 4840, the Burrow from Lego Harry Potter. Back in 2010, this 568 piece set would have cost you about $60 or 62 Great British Pounds. Now if you've got one of these mint in box, it's worth about $233, or used as you see before you, it's worth about $136. If you choose wisely, LEGO can be a great investment. Given that so far we've had multiple versions of the Night Bus and multiple versions of Hagrid's Hut, I'm really surprised that this is the one and only Burrow. I'm positive we're going to see some more Harry Potter sets in the future, and I'm really curious to learn what we might get. Diagon Alley is definitely due a reboot in minifigure scale, complete with Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. But more importantly, which Harry Potter sets would you like to see LEGO bring out next? Also, which of the old sets would you like me to tear down, rebuild and review on video? Be sure to share your thoughts in the comment section below. I do read them all and I respond to as many as I can. I really hope you enjoyed this vintage LEGO Harry Potter restoration, speed build and review video. If you did, a thumbs up is always appreciated and don't forget to subscribe for more LEGO Harry Potter content. Thanks a million for checking out today's review, stay safe and we'll see you on the next build video. Oh man, I love that elf.